Dr. Satwa, thank you very much for your time today. And I have a few questions here to help our patients understand more about peripheral arterial disease. So my first question to you is, as a vascular specialist, what is your recommendation? When should patients first seek attention from a vascular specialist? Yes, that's a very good question, Dr. Luckenpaul. I think that um, a patient uh, who may uh, seek the advice of a vascular specialist for a peripheral arterial disease is one who uh, first and foremost has symptoms. Uh, symptoms are very important. What are these symptoms? Typically, it is leg cramping or pain with exertion. Uh, that exertion can be something as simple as walking. Um, that could be as simple, something as simple as going up a, a set of stairs or going up a ramp. And typically, the pain or cramping or discomfort in the legs is uh, alleviated with rest. Um, the other hallmark feature is a patient that may have a cold uh, uh, feeling feet uh, or toes um, or possibly discoloration in the toes, uh, sometimes bluest discoloration you'll notice particularly. Um, and uh, lastly, and I think uh, very importantly, is patients that have breakdown in skin. Uh, many patients unfortunately wait a very long time for skin changes to occur. And I always tell my patients that if you start to notice any discoloration or breakdown in the skin, to uh, not um, make excuses up and, and really get in to see a, a specialist immediately because that can be a hallmark sign of decreased blood flow to the area. Now, again, in all those symptoms, the key thing to understand is that if the supply of blood flow is not matching the demand, then the patients will experience these symptoms. These symptoms can vary from being once in a while to being lifestyle altering and limiting. And again, I urge any patient that has any of these symptoms to certainly come in and uh, get evaluated for peripheral arterial disease. Along those lines, risk factors are very important. Risk factors include, but not are, are not limited to patients that have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, they may have diabetes, they may smoke, and uh, certainly uh, peripheral arterial disease is a disease of the elderly. Um, but with that being said, it's not to say that if you don't have those risk factors, you cannot get PAD because family history, unfortunately, we can't beat our genes and family history uh, certainly plays a role in expression of peripheral arterial disease. So if you have any of these risk factors and you exp express any of these symptoms, then I strongly urge these patients to uh, be evaluated by a peripheral uh, arterial disease specialist. So Dr. Satwa, you mentioned diabetes. Uh, if I'm sure there are a lot of diabetics listening to uh, what you have to say, how should they care for their feet? Should they do anything special or different? Yes, uh, so unfortunately diabetes is becoming uh, more and more prevalent uh, in our population. Um, and uh, what we need to understand is that diabetes is uh, uh, it's not just elevation of blood sugar. It, it, diabetes can manifest so many other um, areas of damage in the body. And uh, one of the major areas of damage that uh, diabetes uh, can target is vascular structures. And so uh, unfortunately um, in diabetics who um, do not follow proper care, they would be more prone to more advanced disease in the arterial bed. And so I strongly urge these patients that are diabetics who may have any of the symptoms to even have a lower threshold to become a, to, to come in and get evaluated. Now, I think diabe diabetic foot care is very important and um, working with our colleague podiatrists in the community uh, is essential. Uh, I always have any patient that comes through the vascular center that has not seen a podiatrist who has diabetes and uh, signs of peripheral arterial disease uh, have them urgently evaluated by a podiatrist. Again, it's very essential. Foot care is particularly essential. We also have data that shows that patients who are diabetics that uh, have poorly controlled um, sugars and poorly controlled peripheral arterial disease are at exponentially elevated risk of uh, having an amputation. And obviously, we at the Center for Vascular Medicine take that very 
uh, seriously, and our job is to prevent any amputations from occurring. And so uh, it is a very important, again, and essential for our diabetic patients to come in and get evaluated for peripheral arterial disease. So if a diabetic patient follows all your instructions, is very complete, is paying attention to his or her diet, exercises, goes to a podiatrist on a regular basis, is their risk of amputation any better, worse? Can they avoid an amputation if they take care of themselves better? Absolutely, Dr. Look and Paul. Uh, the key to uh, pre the key to uh, prevention is staying on top of this disease process. And uh, I, again, every patient, I will go out on a limb and say every patient that has diabetes that is over the age of 65, and uh, whether they have smoked or not, they certainly need to come in to get evaluated, uh, at least at baseline for a peripheral arterial disease. Um, now, what we do with the information varies. It doesn't mean that you, if you come in for an evaluation that you're automatically going to go to surgery because, again, we're very selective as to who we take for any type of invasive procedures. But again, if one has those risk factors and they're not staying on top of it, uh, i.e. not going in to see their primary care or vascular specialist or podiatrist, then the risk of amputation will certainly go up exponentially. Now, if we catch the disease process in a timely manner, we may be able to restore that blood flow and uh, prevent the amputation from occurring or even um, push the amputation, the timing of amputation back. But again, I strongly urge any diabetic that has uh, those risk factors to come in and to get evaluated for peripheral arterial disease. Thank you again, Dr. Satwa.